Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Evil Within Akumu difficulty video walkthrough. At this moment in time, it is a no upgrade run, but that could change in the future because this is incredibly difficult, folks. So we're on chapter one here. This is an emergency call. You're going to notice that some sequences are edited out for fidelity in the guide. I'm only going to be keeping in the moments where it demands players to do things, and a lot of moments don't. So, these first areas in the entirety of Chapter 1 are all introductory. There is nothing here that should stump you too hard, and it's literally introducing you to the sneak mechanic, and it's showing you the tone of the game and what's going to follow. I have to explain a few th things about this particular difficulty and this game, and this project that I'm about to undertake. So, the first thing you'll notice is, this game has horrendously obnoxious black lines. It is letterboxed to shit. And it does this intentionally to create a more cinematic uh, experience. It also obstructs your vision and your view. It will cut off traps on the floor, it will cut off uh, prompts to pick things up, it will cut off a lot of things. It literally obstructs your ability to see. And considering that the camera is so close to the character, your character does that as well. So you will spend more time on this game fighting the camera and the perspective than you will a lot of other things. So, as much as I would like to bang on this game, I'm not going to in this first episode especially, although I will share my thoughts on what I love and what I don't love. The perspective and the letterboxing is something you get used to. Uh, it'll take a few hours, and at first it can be very frustrating and not very fun, but you do get used to it, and it is bearable. Uh, I just do not understand why, personally. And it is a preference thing. There are some people saying they didn't even notice it, which, to me, is like saying they didn't notice the sun in the sky. But that's another thing entirely. So the Evil Within, a Kumu difficulty, is unlocked by beating the game on Survivor. It might unlock on Casual, I'm not sure. I did Survivor, I got both Nightmare and Akumu. This difficulty is the hardest on the game because you die in one touch. No matter how high your life is, no matter how uh, minuscule the attack is, you will die. I have been killed by a spark from a, a wire that's part of the environment. Just instantly dead. Anything that touches you will kill you. The next thing you need to be aware of if you played on Survivor and you come straight into this is the stealth mechanics. Stealthing the game on Survivor, once you understood how it worked, was very easy to do. It was functional, it took risk, but you could do it, and I had a lot of fun. The first thing I noticed when I put on this difficulty is I could no longer sneak up on anything because their awareness is way too high. So the awareness of the enemies is insanely higher than it was on the other difficulties and you'll notice it straight away. The supplies you receive, the gel that the enemies drop and that you find is all diminished to the point of desperation at every single given moment. Obviously damage is insta-kill. Enemy's life, I do not think is any different. I think it's the same as it was on Survivor, because I've just been... I've just killed a boss, and he took about the same amount he did on Survivor. And it's ridiculous, but he died. So, that is also different. Another thing I've noticed, too, is things are faster. The enemies seem to be faster on this difficulty, and I'm not saying that on the other ones, they don't have the capacity to be quick. I'm just saying... There are moments where, for instance, the Shrieker boss, she would be chasing me and I would have all the time in the world to get away from her. On this difficulty, even when I'm sprinting, she's up my ass the entire time. And it wasn't like that on Survivor. So the only thing I can take from this is that she's faster or she's more aggressive, one of the two. What Suffice to say, pretty damn challenging. And if you're not too good with horror games or with disturbing imagery, it's probably terrifying. What do you need to know about the difficulty aside from what I've just explained? The Trial by Fire is Chapter 2. If you can get through Chapter 2, then you have the fortitude to do this game. The next one is Chapter 6. Chapter 6 is the most debilitating, most difficult, most just infuriatingly annoying and rageful moment in this game so far, and it is the breaking point for this difficulty. When you get there, you're going to learn all about how the mechanics work, you're going to learn all about the things that don't work as well as they should, and you're going to learn just how much 
damage a lack of a checkpoint can give to a game. Because there is a sequence at the beginning of that level where there are two fights that if there was a checkpoint between them, they would be two challenging fights, but really fun because of the challenge. And without that checkpoint, they become two incredibly challenging fights with the most brutal gauntlet ever. Because you cannot practice the second wave, and the second wave is random. First wave is not, second wave is. It's... It's one of the hardest things I've done all year, guys. As far as walkthroughs go, this is probably going to be one of the hardest I've ever made. And this works on two ways. The first one is, that's a good thing, because then hopefully people will need it and people will use it. But secondly to this, I don't think I've been recording a walkthrough for this long in a very long time. And I'm not talking about like Bayonetta Pure Platinum or some of the more eclectic things. Like This is day three of recording. I honestly could not tell you any project I've ever made that's taken more than three days. That's just how brutal it's been. And I'm learning a lot about the game because I'm not upgrading. And as it stands, I'm on chapter 11 and I've also not used any keys. So hopefully the strategies I'm going to be able to give you are going to get every single person through these areas. But the worst part about some of them is that I can't help you guys. There are moments on this game where it is 100% skill and luck and no strategies in the world are going to make that any different because there's no magic way to do things. The good news is there are other parts that I have really, really good strategies to do things and I'm hoping that they'll help a lot of people. Now this first moment here is going to be hiding from the chainsaw guy. He's called a sadist and uh, now we have to sneak by him with a wounded leg. So there are bottles littered around the environment. You can throw them to distract enemies and this is pretty much a tutorial to teach you how to do it. I wanted to walk over here to see if I could see anything on this side. Turns out you can't and you need him to break the boxes to get past them at this point. So there's nothing over here, but not to worry. Getting past this guy is not too bad once you know what you're doing. Another thing that Akumu mode seems to do that I didn't get in Survivor, which it could be complete conjecture at this point, it might just be the capriciousness of the game. But the checkpoints are very strange. On a survivor when I died, I came back at a checkpoint, where the checkpoint landed. On this, it puts you back, like, where you started the area, but it saves the progress through the area. So if you've killed people, they're dead. And if you've opened chests, they're open. But you're not where the checkpoint landed. And in some cases, it actually makes the game easier. But the problem is, it's going to make editing a nightmare. Because, of course, I am going to fail a lot in this playthrough. Uh, I'm going to probably show my death statistic at the end. And I guarantee, by the end, it's probably going to be about 700 deaths. Because that is literally how insane it is. And some of it is not even you. There are some escort missions in this game where you're a, the person who's with you, your ally, are the worst AI I've ever come across in a game. There's one sequence where the Chinese guy always see He might be Japanese, I'm not too sure what his nationality is. Uh, but he always runs into this one house and there's a fucking trap that instantly kills him and you fail. And I've got footage of him doing it five times. And in the end, I had to run and trip the trap myself to stop him from doing it and dying. Like, you shouldn't have to put up with that bullshit when a game is as hard as this is. But one thing I want to clear up before the end of the video, guys, which is a, a misconception I had coming into the game because I read it somewhere and it's wrong. Burning bodies on this game has nothing to do with them coming back. There is no regen mechanic, there is no getting back up. All it is is a finishing move to help you conserve ammunition and a way to kill enemies pretending to be dead. There are no crimson heads in this game. Now that you know that, use your matches wisely because they're some of the most important items on the game. And get used to only having five of them because if you're doing no upgrades you will never have any more. Very, very difficult stuff. The most contentious issue in this entire playthrough is your sprint. There is a penalty for exceeding your sprint and you start being penalised in the 10% of, of the maximum amount you have so you don't even get a full sprint before it starts to fuck you. It's insane. But hopefully, with a little help, you'll be able to get through it. But thank you very much for watching. Welcome to The Evil Within and you take care now.